welcome to our Science Investing Show. As you can see, today we've got a full house. We've got Dave, Lois, Jordan, and myself. So today we're going to be talking all things getting started with website investing. So first of all, how are you doing, guys? Yeah, really good. Thank you very much. Good. Good. Um, so let's take a look at who is here. So we've got Luke, Brian, Leanne, uh, Sophie, Buddy, and I think that's Adam. Based on how you speak, based on how you guys, I think that's Adam. Could be Mark. Um, so yeah, t talking all things website investing, uh, and then as usual, uh, me and Lois today are going to tear down two expired domains that are available in our HTML inventory, so they're ready for purchase. Uh, so if you like what you see, go to nishopsa.builders and go to our HTML inventory if you want. It's Adam, I guess. <laughs> I knew it was him, because the way he talks, he's got a unique way of talking, I knew it was him. <laughs> um, so, who wants to start? Uh, I'll, pass to you, I'll pass to Dave then, because I know you've prepared sort of a presentation uh, to run us through. I think we should um, catch up about um, Jordan's Thailand holiday first. Um, and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> any yeah, interesting plus... story, Jordan? Um, where to start, really? It's an interesting country. <laughs> it is a, yeah, no, fascinating country. It's it's hard when you have like two and a bit weeks off of work to get yourself back into the swing of things but mm. literally yesterday first day back and today i'm straight on the live stream so <laughs> it's a it's yeah. a you know kind of straight back to reality to be honest with you <laughs> well, we'll thought we'd throw you back in the deep end yeah <laughs> if i if i start nodding off a little bit it's probably because i'm still a little bit jet lagged so if i see my eyes closing at some point I, it's not because your presentation's boring dave I'm sure, I'm sure it's not. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> someone's already said they're looking forward to the live stream, so um, no one's interested in the presentation. They want to jump straight to uh, Lois and Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. All right. So yeah, today um, I'm going to talk about um, kind of website investing journey. So, i.e., the decisions involved as people are kind of going through the startup of the website. Um, choices that they have to make throughout the way um and um maybe have some discussions around those choices um, and also how we can hopefully kind of fit in and, and help with those choices as well um so i will share the slides so yeah website investing um and the term website investing obviously some people might kind of read that and think oh you know you need 50k 100k to get involved in website investing um this is aimed at everyone so it's aimed at people that want to do it themselves um people that have kind of you know a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds that they want to kind of just start up a, a site um and do it themselves and also the people that have kind of um much larger investments available um to kind of get involved everyone has to make the same decisions along the way so obviously the goal um is to kind of build a site or multiple sites that are earning a regular monthly income um, and can be sold for a profit. Um, so whether that's kind of a profit from what you've invested into it um, or getting some money back from the time that you've invested, that is everyone's goal in regards to kind of building a, a digital asset. The choices that kind of, I think everyone has to make along the way, and I'm sure that I've missed some as well, so um, that'd be quite interesting to explore, but kind of buy versus build, um so do you go out and buy a website from somewhere like flipper um or do you build one uh, yourself or use a company to build one um age domains versus fresh domains um kind of do it yourself in regards to um the coding of the site the content the keyword research or do you outsource that to someone else do you do link building um once it's kind of grown how do you monetize the site um, and then once it's monetized, how do you kind of continue growing it afterwards? Um, now, each one of those choices in itself is probably an episode that we could explore. Um, and certainly I know Adam and Mark did um, a series on the kind of buy versus build um, scenario. So um, this is kind of aimed as a high level overview rather than a deep dive into any of these subjects. So in regards to kind of the first one, um buy versus build so i've kind of looked at the choices um i've noted down what i see as kind of the pros and cons um on each um so obviously you can go to kind of a marketplace 
um, and you can buy a site that is already earning an income. Um, the obvious pro with that is it's already in, earning an income. So you're, you're going to get instant cash flow back from that site. Um, it's already got traffic. Um, it's already hopefully an established site. Um, the kind of cons that I can see in regards to buying a site, um, the downsides are there's a whole load of kind of diligence needed on not only the domain, um, you need to look at where the traffic's coming from, um, how reliable is that traffic, has it got a long history, is the traffic being generated by um, someone kind of doing activities, or is it coming from social media accounts, um, and also the financials of the site as well. So, um, you know, if, if it's from an affiliate network, um, what is the agreement in place? Can you take that agreement over? Um, if it's from display ads, is that a reliable kind of um, income going forward? Um, is it seasonal? There's a whole load of questions that you kind of need to answer um, before being comfortable around um, buying a site. Um, and if, the, if you do miss any kind of red flags, whether that be kind of bad content or um, someone's used kind of um, black hat techniques to kind of grow the site, then you're opening yourselves up to kind of future issues. Um, and it could be that Google kind of penalizes you down the road. Um, it could be that you kind of lose traffic. Um, and, and certainly I know that we've heard some horror stories of people that have kind of bought sites and then come to us a few months later saying, you know, the traffic disappeared. Um, and why is this? And then you kind of look into it a little bit deeper and um, often, you know, the traffic's being generated through the person doing work and um, there's been a little bit of, kind of scam or um, misdirection going on. Um, in regards to kind of building it um, from scratch, um, the pros, the good sides are that you're not going to come across any hidden issues on the site. Um, so you can literally build it from the ground up. You can be confident around everything that's going into the site. Um, you can be confident around the quality of the content that's going into the site. Um, once you get the site up and it's earning an income, there's a, a larger return investment available to you. Um, so obviously it's less money to build the site from scratch than it is to go and buy an already monetized site. Um, and you also kind of control the commercial setup of that site. So you get to kind of choose your display ad network. You get to put in place your own affiliate networks, um, choose which affiliate networks to use. So you have kind of full control over what direction the site goes in. Um, downsides, obviously it's kind of a, a longer investment process. So you're not going to get the money back um, in month one. Um, there can be kind of a lack of, lack of cash flow up front. So even if you use an age domain, it can take several months for kind of that site to be earning and, and delivering an income. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of takes longer as a process to get to the point where it's an established site. Any kind of pros and cons that I've, I've missed there, guys, that you can think of? Or... Mm, no, I don't think so. No? Cool. Right. I'm pleased with that. Um, okay, so the next kind of decision is um, around whether you build a site on an age domain or a fresh domain. Um, and if anyone's kind of watching that's kind of new to the journey, by fresh domain, we, we mean of a domain that has never been used before. So you go out and register it today. Um, by an age domain, it's the domain that's had a website on there in the past. Um, the pros around kind of using a fresh domain is you've got kind of freedom over the domain name. So you can go and register your own domain name. You can choose your own niche. Um, you're not guided or restricted by anything at all. Um, you've got a complete fresh start. So if you've got kind of a certain brand or company name in mind, or it's a really specific niche that you, you know is going to do really well, um, you can go and register that domain. Um, downsides are it's kind of longer to rank in Google. Um, you can go through kind of a Google sandbox process. Um, you've obviously got no backlinks or domain authority uh, with that site. Um, and to get to the same level of backlinks, um, it can cost a hell of a lot more than if you just buy an age domain in the first place. And um, I've got kind of a, 
example of that on the next slide. In regards to kind of pros of an age domain, um, speed of growth um, is a really cost effective way of getting kind of a high domain authority. Um, again, kind of faster return on investment because you get that kind of faster speed of growth. Downsides, you need to go through kind of that diligence process on the domain. You need to kind of look through the history, look through the backlink. Um, Lois and Ellen do this kind of week in, week out. And I think we go through, I don't know how many checks it is per domain, but it's uh, a really thorough process. Um, and if there's any kind of red flags at all, then we wouldn't touch it. We don't bid on it. Um, so, yeah, there is kind of a lot to know about making sure that you're building on that kind of clean age domain. Um, yeah, there are some risks associated with age domains as well, because um, even if you miss something, just a tiny little thing, uh, it can ooh. kind of come back to bite you. Um, so the due diligence process has got to be really, um, you've got to be really, really careful. Um, even sometimes, um, even if you check everything, everything checks out, everything's fine, you start publishing content, and for some reason just Google doesn't index the, the site, doesn't index anything, and then you're like, well... That's a bit unfortunate. So I guess that's another con. But um, I think there are a load more pros compared to fresh domains um, using age domains. I think um, more, much more time. You're saving much more time. Ultimately, you're starting off with an established authority. Uh, you can start monetizing fairly quickly compared to fresh domains. Uh, content yeah. starts jumping into the SERPs very quickly. Uh, well, relatively quickly. So, but yeah, they both have their pros and cons. It's kind of hard to to really distinguish which one is actually better. But I guess sometimes it's personal choice as well. I guess more experienced uh, people would rather start with an age domain and less experienced people are feel more comfortable starting off with a fresh domain. So they have a full control of what's has happened and it's just much easier. Um, but ultimately they both have their pros and cons. I think a lot yeah, of it as well. On the... oh. Sorry, yeah, I'm joined okay. on. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think a lot of it as well does come down to how particular you are about niche selection so if if you've got a really particular niche that you know that that's absolutely what you want to do whether it's a passion project or whatever it may be then you might spend ages searching for the perfect age domain in that space and in the time that it takes you know you might be waiting six months 12 months even before you find a domain in the niche that you want and in that time you could have registered a fresh domain and, and, and done some growth there and then potentially redirected a domain in later when you find one. And so it is kind of weighing up how quickly you want the project to start, I guess, firstly, but also within your niche, how regularly you think it's going to be quite easy to find domains or not. So a lot of it does come down to that kind of selection of the niche. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's you know, also down to um, what the person's looking to build the site for you know if, if they just after like you say like a, a general niche site they're not too worried they, they, they have kind of have it have it as a asset or an investment then an age domain is kind of a, a great place to go if you've got a certain kind of company in mind that you want to build alongside the niche site um then you're unlikely to find the perfect age domain with that name um so kind of a fresh domain is, is the way to go so i, I think there's yeah the situations to use both um, but yeah, I think as as everyone said, you know, if you want that additional speed, then age domains um, definitely the preferred option. Um, we talked about kind of cost and, and backlinks. Um, so this is one of our kind of age domains on in our inventory at the moment, uh, Projector Pros. Um, it's got three hundred and fifty four referring domains um, on that site. If you look around, um, and not just uh, us, but um, kind of other providers as well, you're looking at for a, a decent backlink, um, kind of at least kind of $100, $200 um, per backlink. Um, and so to kind of get to that level of backlinks, uh, it's going to cost you kind of 35 grand as a minimum um, to get 354 kind of high quality links if you do that through link building. Um, or obviously you can kind of do it through kind of organic and you know gaining links through high quality content, but that's going to take years to get to the point where you've got kind of 354 of those. Um, and so you know the value of the age domain, you can buy that from us. Bit of a sales pitch there um, for kind of 6k, um, and that comes with all of the backlinks. 
um, and a site build um, and the content as well. So, you know, yes, age domain is a slightly more expensive way to go. Um, but actually, in the long run, um, it's really, really cost effective. The next uh, kind of decision um, is, you know, if you do want to kind of do everything in house and you want to build the site, then obviously you've got to kind of choose where you host it. Um, what CMS do you use? Um, are you building it in WordPress? Um, if so, kind of what theme, what layout? Do you use a schema? Um, how do you format the content? Um, how do you make it kind of mobile friendly? Um, how do you ensure that kind of the the pages load quickly? Um, you know, have you got the right plugins on the site to kind of reduce bloat um, and also kind of get the right level of SEO? Um, all of these things, you know, and certainly I'm, I'm no expert um, and still learning myself. Um, and I think it's an area that kind of it's a continuous learning experience. That, but if you're a kind of beginner looking to start a brand new site, all of that's pretty daunting. Um, and so there's kind of lots of questions to, to cover. Um, and that can be certainly a, a kind of, you know, a choice around whether to build it yourself or, or outsource that site building. Um, then once you've kind of got the site, you've chosen the domain, um, the next step is kind of around um, content. So do you kind of write your own content? Um, do you outsource that content? Um, again, I've put down some kind of pros and cons. Um, I'm sure there are loads of others. Um, the pros that I've seen kind of writing your own content is obviously you've got kind of complete control over the, the content itself, you know, what topics you write, the quality. Um, you haven't got to manage anyone, you haven't got to manage a supplier. Um, it's just you, yourself, and, and your blog. Um, and obviously, apart from time which i'll come on to in a second because it's quite substantial um there's no kind of financial cost involved um the cons and it kind of goes back to the previous slide really is you do require some knowledge and, and we deal with a, kind of a lot of customers who um have started up their blog and, and haven't done any keyword research before they started writing um and some of those work really well um, and some of them, unfortunately, um, kind of fall flat because they're writing about things that are already very competitive um, or that no one's searching for. Um, so kind of doing that keyword research up front is really important. Um, and also, this is you know an area that I've certainly struggled with, uh, with my sites and with one site um, I have chosen to kind of outsource the writing. Um, and, it's having that willpower and you know after you've done a whole day of kind of normal work then to go and dedicate additional time to um a blog it is really hard um and I, I even tried kind of getting family members to get involved um but again you know consistency and willpower of those is hard um and so yeah it, it is tough if you're trying to kind of do it yourself um to kind of have that consistency week in week out I, th I think there's always a cost, though, regardless, because um, if you're outsourcing, obviously, you're paying money to get content, right? Uh, but if you're not, then you're, your cost is your time. So <laughs> yeah. the time, I think, is still a very important cost because that's time that you, you're not going to spend with your family or friends. Um, so I guess it depends on which cost you're willing to to take basically uh what you're able to afford because the good thing about time is that if you are doing it yourself then you're definitely saving money if you don't have money but you're willing to exchange that for your time um ultimately i think there's always going to be a cost and that's just the nature of the business yeah yeah i agree um on, on the outsourcing side i've kind of looked at the one of the pros being scalability and speed of growth um because obviously and, and again i kind of come on to it in a minute if you look at kind of the time involved in in getting a site to a really authoritative size um that can take a long time <laughs> just in genius comment <laughs> we'll be your friends um, gina <laughs> um, yeah so you know if, if you want to kind of um push out um kind of 300 blog posts um it's much um kind of faster to do that through an outsourcing um, provider um, rather than trying to do that kind of yourself. And also once you get to the, the point where your blog is 
needing growth um, and is showing really good signs of kind of fast growth, then, you know, can you add to the site fast enough to kind of really push it to the next level um, by doing the content on your own? Um, so in regards to kind of that, um, I've looked at our kind of data um, project and um, to get to a site that is earning um, a thousand dollars a month, um, effectively you need on average 380 blog posts. Um, if, and this is fast compared to my speed, but if you can do them for an hour, um, an hour per post, then, and you do kind of an hour a day over and above your normal job, it's going to take you over a year to get to that sort of size of blog. Um, if you're not a machine and you can't do them every single day and you do kind of three a week, um, then it's going to take you two and a half years to get to that sort of size of site. Now, like you said, Eleanor, you know, if, if you're happy to commit that time, you're happy to kind of put that work in, then actually, what a great investment. You know, after two and a half years, you could have a site that is earning a thousand dollars a month. Um, so it's just down to kind of your personal preference around, you know, do you have the time and effort to do that or yeah. do you want to outsource that and kind of get those results faster, I guess? Um, it's, yeah, it's, really I mean, I in. it's really interesting now that you've put that into perspective and mm -hmm. with that data, it's actually really, really interesting. It, that, that's what mm -hmm. it takes, two and a half years, three posts per week. And I think yeah. as well, like when it comes to websites or blog posts or whatever, people always look to them as like a side hustle and stuff. And I think before you actually get, uh, you understand how much time and stuff it takes, like it's so much more than a side hustle, especially if you do want to get some type of monetization out of it. And, you know, it does take time, but... I mean, and, and knowledge, like um, Dave said, if you don't have that, like it, like before I got into SEO, I thought, oh, you know, blogging is just blogging. I didn't even know it was a thing like keyword research and all stuff like that, all this stuff that comes behind it, which you might ultimately have to outsource for. It's just, it's insane. Mm -hmm. It's a crazy amount of cost and time. Also, it's not yeah. just, it's not just sitting down and, and writing stuff mm -hmm. every night and hustling. Mm -hmm. You've got to make sure that this is, as you optimized, yeah. Otherwise, you and me will spend two and a half years just pushing out content that's never going to run because we haven't done keyword research, we haven't done the SEO side of things. It's so tricky. So you you, you come to you come to think maybe it's just best if you just outsource, right? Especially if you're not an SEO professional, like because because that's I think that's where a lot of people like passionate bloggers, people regular people decide to start something out of passion. They just sit down and, and publish their own stuff just because they're enjoy it, they want to share it with the world. Um, but they're not really they, they haven't got an idea of what it takes to really run. Like it's mm -hmm. it's so much more than just sitting down and, and pushing out content. It's so much more than that. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. Um, and, and if you look at you know, the, the comment that I put on the end there, and again, you know, it's, it's a bit of a shameless sales pitch, but um, you could get the same amount of content in, in eight weeks um, if you outsourced it. And so in regards to kind of scale of growth, um, you know, two and a half years versus eight weeks is, is a huge difference. Um, mm -hmm. The other side of it is a lot of people kind of get into blogging and, and they kind of want this passive income and then they say they're kind of they're doing the content themselves um and it's it's, it's a passive income in, in my mind is you know an income where you're, you're not having to do work for it but actually two and a half years of um you know three hours a week is, is a significant amount of work now the return on the investment at the end is definitely worth it you know a grand a month for um you know for, for 12 months um, and that's definitely worth that kind of time investment that you've put in and also you've got an asset there that you can then sell um, but yeah I, I'm, I'm not sure that I've got the kind of dedication to do that as a side hustle um, and so yeah I, I do think it's an easy one to to kind of choose from my perspective to outsource yeah on the Leanne's point yeah same to be fair it's you come to to realize that it, it, you can't do it yourself uh, you can do like for some time i guess get the site up and running and you just think well i've got a scale here like how do i scale i can only do so much i'm only one person and that's when you think i, I think it's time to scale once you kind of made the decision around the content um and you've got kind of the site up and running 
whether you've done an age domain or a fresh domain, you've got to kind of choose whether to kind of do further link building on the site. Um, and again, you know, going back to the kind of choice of um, WordPress theme to use and, and what site builder to use, if you're new to the industry, this is a minefield. Um, and there's so many different kind of terminology out there, different systems. Um, you can use kind of organic link building methods using kind of digital PR and um, Haro to kind of build really kind of high authority news links as more traditional methods um, like shotgun and guest posts and niche edits. Um, different providers have different terminology as well. If you kind of, you know, look at the kind of the range of um, link building services that are on offer. And um, if you choose the wrong provider or you try and do it yourself and end up linking to someone who um, is kind of, you know, a PBN or offering kind of really low quality links um, or spammy links, and you can actually end up harming the site more than helping it um, and kind of falling foul of Google's um, kind of link building policies. Um, so, yeah, this, again, is an area that I think could be a whole um, show in itself around kind of the world of link building. Um, but, you know, if you're looking to grow your site and new to the industry, it's a really, really tough one to kind of learn about and um, understand um, quickly. And then finally, um, you've got kind of monetization. Um, so once the site's kind of earning, uh, sorry, once the site's getting kind of good, healthy monthly traffic, um, what display ad networks do you sign up to? Um, do you put on affiliate content? Um, how much uh, affiliate content do you put on there? What percentage um, of content should be affiliate content? What affiliate networks you sign up to? um are there other kind of re revenue streams that you can look at with your site you know could you sell leads to um businesses could you do actual product sales um are there ebooks that you can kind of launch um there's a whole load of kind of questions around monetization and kind of next steps um with the site that again is, is a fascinating kind of world all on its own um and i think we have we see kind of a complete range of customers um some that are kind of signed up to adsense um and monetizing their site there you know others that are using kind of media vine um and some that are actually kind of selling physical products through their site and they've turned their niche site into kind of a an e-commerce store um and yeah so there's, there's so many different avenues that you can go down with the site around monetization um and again you know if, if you're completely new to the industry it must be quite overwhelming to work out kind of which direction to go uh, with the site and, and yeah, what information to kind of um, believe and, and what network to use. So uh, it's, yeah, interesting. And then again, kind of following on from that, um, how do you can kind of continue the growth of the site? So how do you maximize revenue? Um, simple kind of changes within site structure can change how much you're earning um where the ads are positioned how many gaps there are in your content um font size can affect the kind of revenue from the site um do you put more content on the site or do you kind of focus your efforts on link building um do you change display ad networks when do you change display ad networks when do you add in affiliate content um and also kind of a key one when do you choose to kind of sell the site or do you carry on growing it and hold it as an asset? Um, these are all kind of questions that that once you've got the site up and running are kind of the next steps and, and things to, um, to talk about and discuss. Um, and I think over the next kind of um, few weeks that I'm on the, the blog, it'll be interesting kind of to dive into these um, in more detail um, and start to kind of cover these off. Um, but um, and again, you know, complete shameless plug here. Um, one of the things that I think we're really good at as a company, um, and obviously we do it on the, the podcast, we do it on the YouTube channel, um, is we are very open with kind of giving away this information. We're always happy to have a chat about sites and um, kind of next steps and give advice. Um, there's myself, Jordan, Eleanor, Leanne, and Lois, 
all available to kind of jump on calls and help give strategy advice. Um, we have kind of investment packages that I've talked about in the past on these sites that we've kind of designed around kind of the data project. Um, all of those involve kind of monthly strategy calls throughout the process. We give guidance around how to get the most out of the site, how to grow the site. Um, but even if you use us for kind of a, a one-off content order, then you're not sure what package to go, go with next. Um, you know, don't hesitate in giving us a shout, whether you're at the start of your kind of website investing journey or um, you feel like you're an expert. Um, yeah, we're always happy to kind of jump on a call and, and talk things through. So yeah, if, if any of the kind of questions in this presentation have kind of triggered something, um, then please reach out. Um, we're always happy to kind of yeah, discuss in more detail. Also on the last slide, uh, uh, Dave, planning on whether we when should you sell and when should you grow or continue mm. to grow obviously with selling there's like a whole new world after that like how do you yeah. sell it who do you sell it to like it's so it's it's it's, it's incredible like i think you really 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 need help like <laughs> like even myself like i've been in the SEO industry for uh two plus years now and uh, even i don't know certain things and i'm and i've been in the industry you know uh that's how important it is that you get help and that you outsource if whatever is needed um so it's a it's a massive world really it is yeah and also i think that even if you're an expert having a second pair of eyes on yeah. a site can be really helpful um and i know internally you know um we've seen age domains that some people are like oh that looks good and then when we get everyone to look at them we're like oh actually there's you know that issue there um yeah and yeah, there, there's there's lots to kind of look at. And so, yeah, no matter how experienced you are, I think having that kind of second opinion is really useful. And I think with SEO as well, especially like it's constantly changing. So you constantly have do have to be in communication with, you know, um, like we do at Niche and stuff like that. Like there's constantly something pretty much near enough every week that someone has changed or something has come in. So I think just keeping up with all the SEO trends and things as much as you possibly can as well as such it makes such a huge difference. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, anything that I've missed from that? Obviously, you kind of you said about um, the selling or growing, Eleanor. Anything else? Kind of any other key decisions along the way that that I've missed? Oof. Um, <laughs> I think you covered. I think you covered. Where to start? <laughs> no, I think you covered it all. <laughs> we have a couple of comments uh, that I would like to share that we have from some people. Um, so Liam was saying he was particularly interested in due diligence that evaluates the legal compliance of website before purchase compliances with US federal and state law. So, yeah. Any so tra 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 trademark will be the, the, the key one. So obviously. Um, around age domains um we kind of check that there's no trademark registered um with that brand name um or site name um in regards to gdpr laws um i'm not sure that they necessarily apply because they're about kind of data protection of other people's content um and we never encourage and we never do ourselves we never use content from the old age domain so although we buy the domain um, everything we do in regards to kind of the site build and the content um, is brand new from scratch. Um, but I mean, in regards to kind of other diligence on the uh, on the domains, um, you guys know a lot more than that um, in regards to uh, kind of the, the checks that we go through. Yeah, obviously we check for trademarks, which is one of the crucial steps. Mm -hmm. We we see way too often people uh, buying age domains that have a life trademark on them and they, they're they're playing with fire there they really are because they can get in serious trouble and sometimes we've seen some absurd money going into a certain bit because people started bidding wars on some of the domains we look at and some of them have got life trademarks and there's like thousands of people thousands of dollars being bid on for a domain that has a life trademark so this is something we are very careful about because we don't want to get our clients into trouble this is like one of our first and most important steps we take when we do due diligence for age domains. Uh, and then the rest are really more on the quality of the age domain, historic content, um, whether uh, has, it, has it been used for anything spammy. But these are 
nothing that these are more for us to see whether this is a, this is a HMA worth buying. Uh, but of course, the legal side of thing is that we check for trademarks and also we never, ever uh, copy, paste the same content that existed on this domain uh, and use it as it was before. We make sure we make original right, original content, even when we do recreate pages and then page to page, redirect those pages. We always make sure that we recreate those pages with original content freshly written by our team. Um, so there is no really anything, any way that we can get in trouble legally in any way because we're, we're very, very, very cautious when it comes to that. Um, so Liane is saying that uh, it's easier to get a brandable domain with a fresh domain that is 100% true really is because when you look at uh let's say for example you're looking at our age domain inventory you're going to see probably like 10 15 domains available over there and they already have like a set name this is what you're getting um you can't change that but with a fresh domain you, you decide your name obviously so many domains of domains are parked nowadays uh especially the good ones um but sometimes if you have a name in your mind you can always check and see whether you can get lucky and that domain will be available so it's true. Uh, we have Gina asking, saying, "Is it good time to sell my site?" Carol Broadband said that uh, this week that there are there's a lot of sites for sale now on a platform he, ha he uses. Just wondering if the market is up and down. Thoughts, Dave? Uh, my thoughts would be around kind of Gina's site, really, uh, around how long the site's been monetized for, um, how consistent the traffic is. Um, what sort of level the income's at, um, how diverse the income sources are. I think there's a load more questions we need to know about Gina's site, whether kind of it's a good time to, to sell or not. Um, I, I haven't kind of um, seen you know anything in regards to kind of the market going down. Certainly, all the data that I've seen, certainly from two marketplaces, is that there's a lot, lots of demand for sites at the moment. Um, and so, yeah. So if you're after kind of a good multiple, then then yes, it's a good time. But I think it would depend on your site and its metrics to know whether or not now is a good time to sell or not. I think as well, if it's just saying that like there's a lot of sites for sale on a platform, for me, I don't know if I'm coming at this obviously from a sales perspective with, with my sales brain on, but that to me says that it's it's going well because if people are willing to be selling their sites they're willing to do that to make money from it and so if a platform's got tons of sites on there for sale then it's you know yes you could argue that your site might get lost in you know all the sites that are for sale but at the same time it means that people are out there buying sites still because people wouldn't be selling them if people weren't buying them yeah that's true has is there been has there been like an average multiple that's been going around these days or so what's what's the situation with that um, there were some numbers that I um, got from, I think it was Flipper, um, on multiples that I think I was shared on Craig's stream. Okay. Um, and I'll bring them to the next stream. Um, but yeah, the, the multiples um, kind of over the last three years, um, the averages are going up. Yeah, I think for right now, something between 36 to 40, if not, if not more than 40 now. Um, or even higher with longer, yeah. if you've got kind of a really reliable, history yeah even higher as well yeah we, we had a client that sent us a couple of domains recently from flipper and uh, they're all for 40 40 uh, 40 x multiple so um it's definitely it's definitely good really really good um liane is saying that um she thinks that people misinterpret um the fact that hma is, is an overnight process you know you still need a good six to eight months to get it off the ground um yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah, I'm definitely not saying any way. And um, some of the misconceptions we sometimes get with customers is that, you know, we're, the site will be launched on a Monday and then by the Friday, they'll be making loads of money. Um, even with an age domain, unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, it is still kind of a long term investment, um, but kind of typically quicker than a fresh domain. Yeah, I was I watched a uh, listened to a podcast the other day uh, from Niche Pursuits, and um, there was someone who managed to get an H domain up and running, published about forty six posts. Um, the domain actually didn't index at all for a month or so, and then suddenly started indexing, and now he's making three grand from affiliate content with forty six yeah. posts, which is insane yeah. using an H domain. So when well, it's good, it can be really good, uh, but Absolutely. obviously yeah. it's not. As the answer is like, it's not an overnight success. It still needs time. It still needs time. It's just a fact. 
I think the thing as well with the, the age domains that we see n not do so well are people that do buy that age domain and expect it to take off and then get disheartened when it doesn't and then stop investing. Whereas, obviously, if you keep investing, and like you say, it doesn't have to be a, a monetary investment. It can just be you buy the age domain and then you put the time in to do the post yourself. But as long as you keep adding content and keep going with it, as long as there's some indicators to show that it is growing, then it will get to a stage where you know, you'll be making some good money off of it. Yes. Um... I've learned how to press the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, obviously Adam's uh, comment there, I don't know how much we're allowed to say, so I'm not going to go into it in too much detail, um, but watch this space in regards to um, being able to sell your site. Wing, wing. Wing, wing. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to us in a few weeks' time, Gina. Um, so Carrie is asking how much bigger is website investing going to be in the future, which is, I think is a good question. Oh, that's a great question. Um, and one that I think everyone's got different views on. Obviously there's lots of people that are kind of concerned around chat GBT and, um, how that will impact on the industry at the moment. Um, and also one, how it will impact on kind of the, the site views and also how it will impact on content production and um you know how fast people can scale sites um i think i said it on um the the stream a few weeks ago um in, in my opinion people still very much want to read content from people um and if it's obviously been written by kind of ai or um kind of it's been formatted for keyword optimization um then quite often that content is not engaging um and so people just won't read it and so i, I think that there's still lots of future around good human written readable content that is engaging and informative and i think it, you know as long as we as niche site owners kind of keep producing that then the the, the industry you know will continue to grow yeah i i think website investing is just going to keep growing, uh, especially mm -hmm. now that people are awakening to the value of owning digital assets. Um, it's it's the new kind of real estate type of investment going. So especially when people go, you know, the, th the thing with website investing is that it's not obviously widely discussed. It's not on the news. You know, when you read the news, they say, oh, my God, this is the property. This is what's going on in the property, mortgage rates, this, this and that. Nobody really is talking on a mass scale in the media about website investing, but uh, people are awakening to it. Uh, people are seeing the value. The multiples are constantly going up. Uh, the ad networks are constantly increasing. They're paying more. Um, so for me, this is a sign that website investing is just growing. Um, and I think it's gonna, it's getting, it's getting hard. You know, SEO is getting difficult. Uh, Google has got higher demands. Google demands quality. And you, you know what? That's totally fine because uh, the people that provide quality and are able to stick through and and provide that the things that Google wants or, or they're willing to do the hard work, these people are going to thrive, and which is good because if it was easy, then everyone is going to get into it and it's going to be just polluted, right? So yeah, um, I think that website investing is going is it has got a really 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 bright future. I think because it's constantly shifting and changing as well, because the industry changes, but because it's an industry that can change when you compare it to like, say, something like property, at the end of the day with property, a house is always going to be a house. And I don't know, I don't know what change could come in the property market where a house isn't going to be a house anymore, but it's still the same thing. Whereas with website investing, you know, five years down the line, if it's going to be completely video content for these sorts of sites or whatever it's going to be, you can always adapt to mm -hmm. respond to that and you can always learn yeah. new skills, like you say, to, to make, to still make money in, in that same kind of broader niche, I guess, a yeah. broader industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Leanne's saying an expert is never, an is never really an expert. Yeah, things change all the time, especially in this industry, isn't it? Like, they do. Uh, today, one thing works, the next day, Google scrapes that or search engine yep. scrapes that and they say, actually, because it's, 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 it's a great example was the, the AI content because Google did a massive mm -hmm. U-turn on AI content. Suddenly, it's okay as long as you can prove EAT, double E. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You've got to keep on your toes. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's also saying when you build uh, when you build sites, it's important to have an up to date privacy policy, terms and conditions, cookies policy. Yep, absolutely. And the economy is very tough right now. Uh, a lot of people might not sell right now to secure lump sums. Yes, the economy is difficult. Yeah, if the people have got kind of a, a site that is a, a good asset um, and for whatever reason, kind of cost of living crisis, they want to kind of have access to those funds, then uh, that'll be why people are kind of selling sites. Yeah. Okay, um, so guys, if you have any questions at all, please keep asking them. We are very open to discussing everything, website investing, just anything SEO related, really. We're very open to it. Uh, in the meantime, um, we're going to start with some H domain teardowns. Um, so I'm going to start with the first one, um, and then I'm going to pass to Lois. She's going to do the second one. Um, Right, so well, as I said earlier, both of these domains are available in our HTML inventory. So if you go to nichewebsite.builders, click on our HTML inventory, you can find them there and buy them uh, if you like what you see. So the first one I'll start with is the uh, Tomato Headquarters. And uh, it's funny because we, we keep saying that it's it's hard to find a, an HTML that has got a good name, brandable name. But I think the Tomato Headquarters is actually a really, really awesome name. Um, and it's also in the in a great niche. It's in the gardening gardening niche. Eleven years old, DR16, two hundred and twenty two referring domains. Um, I've got some awesome competitors to show you that are not only lower authority than this domain, but they're they're absolutely performing incredible. This is just going to show what how awesome the gardening niche is. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to get cracking. You just want to share Adam's um, comment. Okay, sorry. Shall I stop sharing then? No, no, no. It, 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 he's just um, saying that the he, he's just reconfirming my thoughts at the start that everyone's here to see the ace main pair downs. Thanks, Adam. It's the best bit. <laughs> okay, so shall we do this again then? Share my screen. Okay, so as I said earlier, it's DR16, 221 referring domains. Um, so let's take a look at this cute Sumato headquarters H domain. As you can see straight away, you're seeing big tomatoes on there. Um, and it says heirloom, farming, and cooking. Um, so this domain was owned by a lady called Dorothy, and she had a massive farm, and she yeah. loved to grow tomatoes, especially heirloom tomatoes. Um, and she also sold some of her fresh, fresh produce in the local farmer's market, and she loved tomatoes so much that she also dedicated uh, kind of a recipe style, if you like, that was uh, dedicated to tomato recipes. So um, here's kind of what this kind of consisted of. So we had gardening equipment, design, heirloom varieties, on the farm, resources, techniques, uh, tomato diseases and pests, tomato health, tomato recipes, as I said. Um, so she was, yeah, really passionate, especially on heirloom tomatoes, but tomatoes in general. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose it falls into the gardening, gardening uh, niche, but obviously she tackled a little bit of recipes so I have, a, I have a very creative way of how I would like to approach this. Um, but I'm, I'm going to come back to strategy in a second. First of all, I just want to show you the juicy backlinks of this domain, because that's really one of the best bits about this domain. Uh, so the first thing that, that I really like about this domain is that it has a backlink from Reddit. Now, you're, you're thinking, well, it's just a forum. Yes, it's a big forum. But first of all, this domain is a do follow. This, this backlink is a do follow, which is extremely rare. Like if you get a backlink from a forum uh, or something like that, it would very likely be no follow. So I really like that we have a backlink from Reddit. Uh, it's a do follow. And so you know what? I'll take it. It's it's a, it's a Reddit is one of the biggest forums out there. So I'll take him. Uh, we have Softpedia. We have Bob Villa. We have uh, Home Talk. We have Peak. We have Healthy Seasonal Recipes. DR70, two do follow links. So I'm happy with that. If you scroll down, there's a little bit more uh, niche relevant um, backlinks that are related to food. Like uh, we have strip spatula, cook, eat paleo, heavy table, and a couple more down the lines as well. So you know what? I'm happy. Also, farm to jar is also a really good backlink, even though it's just DR51, it's a good backlink. So let's jump on to the Anchor Text profile. Uh, here we are seeing branded at the top. So tomorrow headquarters is at the very top, which is great. 
Uh, and then we have, um, again, branded, some things related to the niche here, branded again, uh, and a, a couple of more things down the line. But ultimately, we are seeing branded at the top, and that's kind of one of the most important things. And the same goes for the best pages by incoming links. So what are these links pointing to? The majority are pointed towards the homepage, which is excellent. Um, but if you look at uh, the, the rest, they're, they're predominantly images. And you'll find that uh, images typically contain low-quality backlinks, and this is a... Um, I'm sure this is the same as this one. You're just going to see block spot images, GR5, like just, just scraper type of websites linking to images. This is classic. So first of all, we can't recreate images anyway. Um, and they're very low quality. So even if, even if we could, we still wouldn't want to. Uh, but there are some, I think, internal posts here. Like, for example, techniques. So this was in the in one of her categories of techniques. Tomato cages of tomato trestling, which is best. So it's kind of a, a method or something, a technique for um, for alum tomatoes. So this could be something that we could we would want to recreate. Obviously, this backlink is willing to get inspected. So let's take a look, for example, on this post. Because um, if they're really good backlinks or the post is hyper-relevant, that you want to recreate that and page to page redirected. So as we're seeing here, we've, we've got a great backlink pointed towards that post, which is hometalk.com. You want to keep that as much as possible, recreate that and then page to page redirect that. Um, we have a couple of more backlinks down the line that are pointing towards internal pages. These will need to get investigated, but ultimately we're, not, we're looking at probably about 10 internal posts or so that need recreating, nothing too much. So the cleanup is very straightforward. Right, uh, well, so what's the strategy? Um, so this is kind of where I decided to take like a, a, a kind of a unique approach on this because obviously she was uh, she was focusing on tomatoes. That's okay. We can start off with tomatoes, uh, growing tomatoes. You know, tomatoes one hundred and one. Like, why is my tomatoes not growing? What's wrong with that? Yellow leaves, etc. Um, but on the recipe side of things, I think that we should stay clear of general <laughs> recipes. If that makes sense, like. Um, she obviously focused heavily on tomato recipes, which is fine. We can still cover tomato recipes because we can, we're preserving that relevancy of that HTML anyway. But what I'm thinking of is that do something that's related to your garden. So something like pickling, uh, food storing, uh, making jams, um, you know, things like that. So <laughs> when I was looking for competitors, a lot of those competitors that came up were actually people preppers which is fine because these are people who prepare for obviously doomsday uh but i think this is a great angle we could utilize to make the most of this domain without going too general into the food niche because we want to stay focused on gardening niche here because uh, the predominant purpose of this domain was gardening um but we could do a little bit of um how to make strawberry jelly uh what to do with uh, leftover tomatoes what to do with um i don't know loads of potatoes and stuff like that so i think we could be smart rather than just saying okay here is a recipe for hot dogs here is a recipe for uh for lasagna and things like that i think it's, it's you're gonna delude your intent i think we should really stay strictly as much as possible to the gardening but anyway the the predominant would be of course gardening guides gardening tips techniques but we're gonna have to start off with tomatoes first because obviously this to, this to me heavily focus on tomatoes, especially heirloom tomatoes. Um, so how to grow heirloom tomatoes, um, what's the season, when to plant your seeds, can you plant them indoor, what you what should you do out, outdoor, etc. Like sorry, I'm not, I'm not a gardening expert, but ultimately this is kind of where this is gonna go. Uh, and then of course we can uh, explore gardening gear, which we can monetize. A lot of things need quite a unique things sometimes when it comes to your garden, which is a great way we can monetize. The monetization can come from display adverts, of course, but also from affiliate programs, as I said, like from garden gear. And this is kind of what I had in mind uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the covering and tackling that recipe side of the side that you already had. Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. So the first competitor I want to show is called garden, gardenerbasics.com. They are 14 and it's generating 81,000 per month, which I think is it's just incredible, uh, really, really, really incredible for the main uh, of this authority. So this one is less authority than us. So we are DR16, they are DR14. So a great example of the domain we can tomb raid. Uh, and let's take a look at what they're doing. First of all, they only have 114 posts. Like this isn't a lot at all for, for the amount of traffic they're getting. You would expect probably 500, 600 posts. No, they, they've got barely any posts really. Uh, and they've got like general gardening stuff, which is fine, but they have like tomato stuff as well, like tomato leaves turning yellow. I'll take that content first from them. 
the ones that come to, uh, relevant to, uh, to to models, because remember, we have to start off with the models first, and then I'm going to take off uh, other, other more general uh, gardening guides and, and content they've got. Uh, like, for example, white spots and cucumber. We have um, coffee grounds for roses. We have um, all different things, how to grow cilantro. Uh, we have... All different things really that like non-toxic house plants gardening stools stools <laughs> it's funny um obviously if you have a garden you are gonna have problems with uh <laughs> squirrels and and rats and and cats or whatever digging up your garden right grow lights for tomatoes again super relevant for for us white on tomato leaves uh is that what? Yeah, white. So something, some questions, something's happened. Uh, then we have when to transplant tomato seedings. Again, relevant to us. Um, purple tomatoes uh, varieties. So this is going into varieties, which I really like because there are so many different tomato varieties. Obviously, she focused heavily on heirloom. We have cherry tomatoes. We have beef tomatoes. We have salad tomatoes. You know, this is where it can get really interesting. You can create like 15 pieces of listicle types of content of specifically dedicated to varieties of tomatoes. So also you can then do things like what tomato is best for X, right? So what tomato should I use for salads? What tomato should I use for burgers? What tomato should I use for, I don't know, tomato sauce, etc. You get the point. Um, so this is the first one. Um, second one is not as impressive amount of traffic, but still DR14, less the authority than us, generating 20,000 per month. And this one, Again, they, they focus on interesting things. They still focus on things related to tomatoes. For example, best grow bags for tomatoes. Uh, then they have things like Swedish apples. So this is, again, variety. What is the Swedish apple varieties? Um, Fast-growing indoor plants. We have how, how to stop insects uh, eating plant leaves. These are common issues you, you have when you when you have a garden and, and stuff like that. I'm uh, pretty sure they had some other tomato-related stuff here as well. But ultimately, they do a mixture of different things. Cranberries, uh, Christmas gifts for gardeners. That sounds great. Great thing to monetize. Uh, we have gardening tools and the uses. Really good, really good query. Um, yeah, and uh, square food gardening letters and things like that. Finally, uh, I want to show you a competitor called <laughs> Mary's Nest, which I thought was a really funny name. Uh, and uh, this one was more dedicated to what I have in mind when it comes to the food side of things and, and things like dehydrating vegetables, um, how to do uh, like how to do things like apple sauce and no sugar strawberry jam and uh, sardine recipes and, and meals in the jar recipes. If that makes sense, like that's what I had in mind for this side. Uh, rather than just going into general food stuff. Um, so I think this is a great example of what kind of showing you what I have in mind. Uh, how to make cottage cheese. Again, maybe if you have cows and, and you're you have like a couple of a couple of dairy uh, stuff going on, that's that's also another thing you might be wondering how to do. Uh, tomato sauce, great, because obviously she covered tomato recipes, so we can do some of that. Um, can you pickle without sugar, uh, fermented tomatoes, perfect, uh, sourdough as well is fine. Yeah, you get the point. This is kind of what I had in mind. And this summarizes our beautiful tomato headquarters age domain. So, okay, uh, let's just take a look at whether there's any more questions. Okay, uh, there's no questions for now. Still, guys, there's still a chance for me to ask uh, all right, so now I'm gonna pass to Lois. Uh, Lois, I'm gonna load your um, your overlay. Perfect. Okay, so uh, this is a very, very dis different niche to tomatoes and gardening. So uh, this is a more events by Cody. Uh, it is in the wedding events slash events niche. It's 12 years old, uh, a DR of 21, and 144 of dove mains. So let me just share my screen for you guys. Perfect. Okay, so this is what it looked like, which as I think we can all agree, absolutely stunning domain. So these guys specialized in creative direction, event design, floral design, styling, event planning, event coordin uh, coordination um, with, for your wedding, uh, which is absolutely awesome. Really, really um, lovely niche. So these are the 
Ethereum domains. Um, as I did mention, there was uh, 144 of them, and some of these are very impressive. So right at the top here, we have the MarthaStewart.com, DR of 88. I mean, that's such a um, great backlink to be having. Um, 100 layer cake, I mean, that is a huge uh, wedding backlink. Uh, a practical wedding, wedding sparrow. I mean, just take a look at all of these. I mean, such amazing backlinks to be having, especially for a site that has such a low DR. But again, um, all of this as well is stuff that we will be covering. So I'll go to the strategy for this one. So as I did mention, this is the wedding slash events niche. Um, so the plan is uh, with this one, we are going to be um, focusing on specifically wedding based content. So different types of listicles, you know, 20 best flower um, cake ideas, honeymoon destinations, wedding party sizes, how to guide specifically for weddings, you know, how to prepare for your wedding day, how to stay calm on your wedding day, how to organize your guest list, um, how to decide what theme to go for, how to plan the perfect engagement. Lots and lots of really fun stuff uh, that we will be covering. Uh, types of flowers to have at your wedding, different wedding themes. And then um, once we have completely covered all things wedding, we are going to dive into the events niche as a whole. So again, uh, listicles, 20, 20 best birthday cake ideas, festival destinations, you know, how to prepare for a birthday party, how to prepare for a corporate event even how to organize a charity event. There is so, so much uh, that can be talked about within this niche. So really, really exciting. So this is the um, anchor profile. Again, seeing all nice branded anchors right, right at the top here. Nothing to be suspicious of. It's so natural. Really, really um, lovely. So then we have our best buy links. Uh, not, a not much to see here, but again, um, it's absolutely fine. You know, these, these were a physical company. So, you know, they just used the site to advertise the services, the events they did or stuff like that. Um, but there is definitely uh, stuff that we could uh, look into doing and cleaning up. So, um, yeah, all good. So our first competitor is uh, Women Get Married. DR59 and an insane amount of traffic that are so impressive. Now, is a huge, is much higher DR than us, but again, um, this niche is su like such a great niche to uh, think about getting into. I mean, we, uh, a more events definitely can get to DR59 with the right strategy you put in place. Let's look at these uh, top pages. So again, really really great keywords here you know how to measure red and wing made of honor speeches lots of stuff that we will uh, be incorporating and thinking of um talking about within a more uh, how many people to invite to my wedding made of honor duties um all stuff that people will be looking for when they are trying to organize their wedding so now we have the second one so this one is uh topweddingsites.com Again, um, higher DR of 62, uh, slightly lower traffic, 67.4. But again, really, really impressive stuff. Um, and like um, in the previous one, lots and lots of uh, pages for speeches. That must be a very, very common thing to look for when you are actually planning a wedding, which is good to know. Um, but again, I mean, like rehearsal dinner dress code, how do you, how do you do a, uh, how long do weddings last? Really, really um, great stuff that you can get ideas for um, for this content. So let's go back to the strategy. So as I mentioned, we are going to completely deep dive into the uh, wedding events uh, space before we actually do tackle the event space. But I think this is such an exciting uh, domain to be uh, getting into, and I mean. I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So yeah, that is a more. Great, that was great. Uh, we have had a couple of um, 
of wedding domains previously. I think it kind of became, they, they, they came in a lot during September, October, because the wedding season is in summer. Yep. So yep. I remember like every week I was doing the HMA weddings, there was at least one wedding domain going down because it's the end of the season. Yeah, um, it's popular at the moment. Yeah, but yeah, it's, 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 it's good. It's a good niche to get into, obviously. Uh, and there is so much more you could like explore. You can do all things traditional weddings as well. I recently watched a, uh, a TV show and there was like an Indian wedding stuff. I'm like, oh, that would be good for <laughs> cover like yeah. Indian weddings. I, yeah, that's the thing. And I think as well, when you do think about weddings and stuff, like I feel like people just automatically go to Google or like to a wedding site yeah. and just like they like, because there's so much stuff you don't even think of. So I think with yeah. that, like with the main like this, the amount of content that you can actually get onto this page that is so informative for people. Mm-hmm. Before yeah. even any kind like any commercial monetization and stuff like that, I mean, it's exciting. Yeah, I, I also can't think tell you can... how many. Oh, sorry, sorry, go on, Jordan. Oh, because I can't tell you how many sites I looked at to help write my speech for my wedding last year. So I, I, I'm honestly, when I looked at this, I was like, oh my god, I cannot believe one how many people give a speech, and two, like, of, like the amount, like the amount of searches that come on for yeah. like. Speak yeah. design, like, none, oh. none of my jokes are original i'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i was also thinking you could easily i think tackle uh engagements um you can do easily tackle anniversaries potentially as well first yeah. year anniversary what should i do presents for my wife presents for my husband where should i take them you know yeah you can, you can yeah a little Excited. more so for me, yeah and it's, I think as well because it's like it's just a more event, like that it doesn't actually specify like that it is wedding, you know. So I think obviously because history is wedding events and stuff like that, so so important to keep covering that, yeah, uh, right at the beginning. And then, like you said, expanding to engagement, you know, anniversaries and things. It's it's an exciting space. It is. It is for sure. It's a big day. Mm-hmm. So we have not got any other questions. Uh, so I'm thinking we should probably wrap it up. Um, so the agenda for next week is on Tuesday. Uh, Dave is going to appear on Craig Campbell's uh, live stream. So make sure you tune in in Craig's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and on Thursday, uh, Lois and Leanne will have an amazing uh, stream discussing all things women in SEO. So uh Feel free to tune in. And of course, there are going to be HMA teardowns as well on that day. So it's going to be a very, very interesting stream. Uh, but yeah, shall we, shall we wrap it up then? Thanks, everyone, for joining. It's been a great. I hope you learned um, you know, everything you want to learn on everything, we're starting with website investing, etc. Again, as they said, if you have any questions, if you want to outsource, get in touch with the guys. They'll hook you up and help you. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Lois. All right.